how that song said, um, can it be that it was all so simple then? Or has time written every line? And if we had the chance to do it all again, tell me memories may be beautiful and much too painful to remember so we simply choose to forget Oh, it's the laughter And we will remember Forever, forever The way things were do, 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 do. <laughs> Good morning, y'all Good afternoon, good evening. Yes, I'm bouncing. Not because I'm fiending, but I'm on my balloon. I'm on my ball. I'm on my grind, as they say. Um, uh, uh, I wanted to do this video because um, I meant to do it earlier. And it's really important that I touch this because uh, somebody on one of my past videos uh says something which is very important. They say, usually when you're trying to talk this kind of stuff to your family members who have never heard this. So first of all, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever side of the diaspora that you and your family, welcome, welcome, welcome to the mental house with me, your host, Khadija. So with that being said, um, that is true. That is true. Because like I said, if the larger society has a cold, we have pneumonia. But if one thing that we can learn from the larger society is, um, you know, they don't mind going to therapy. And I think that because we don't trust them, and rightfully so, um, we have been real reluctant to talk about our mental health, especially with white people. And it's okay. I'm not, you know, putting a call on that one way or the other. They know why that is. Um, but, however, at the end of the day, you still need to address your mental capacity, your mental status, your mental health. And that's why I continue to encourage all the young people that are um, under the sound of my voice, or if you have young people in your house, you know, and they don't know what to do, or if they're lucky enough or fortunate enough to be in a position where they can go um, to college, there's a lot of scholar, I won't say a lot, but there's a few scholarships available through different organizations um, that are run by black people that are encouraging black people to get into the mental health field. Um, not that, um, it's just that we don't have enough, you know, and I think, uh, the likes of a Dr. Francis Cress and the loss of a Dr. Francis Cress uh, can, is unmeasurable in our community. Um, who understands the nuances of racism and uh, generational pain, pain bodies, cellular memory, and to have all that infused into what we do to just manage our everyday life. It's really important to have people that you know, can help you navigate, in my opinion. But uh, the reason why I did this video is because someone said, again, um, there was a comment left on one of the videos about when you try to talk mental health stuff in, in any capacity to your family members, they, they freak out and they begin to project everything that you're saying probably back onto you and you know, it, it can be real ugly. It can, that's why when you were in, I think, Cocaine Anonymous or Alcoholic Anonymous, they always tell you when you can safely 
uh, apologize to the people that you've hurt um, and also safely apologize to the people that have hurt you basically um, then it's, it's an important part of your healing because a lot of times that doesn't get the chance to happen and we have to continue to um, just put it out on the spiritual level but if you are fortunate enough to talk to uh, people in your family um, you know it can go either way so I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you an example an example of in my situation was the fact that I had to uh, uh, confront a family member uh, of and it's you know people have the right to make their choices and things of that nature how they want to uh, live their lives I think a lot of times when you begin to produce children you really really have to think about um, you know what you're going to subject it, them to and in, in the case in my family my immediate family um, I have um, you know my family is so multicultural that when I thought about the relationship between the Armenian side of my family and having a brother that married an Armenian woman and produced Armenian and black children um, as a black woman it was a little difficult um, you know and to speak fairly and and unhypocritically I thought that uh, out of all the relationships that my brother may have had it, it was amazing that it was this relationship that I think that served them I think I gotta stop this right now or pause it because somebody's at the door y'all okay <laughs> anyways I've always had a problem because, again, even though, you know, your brothers and your sisters, they marry who they want to marry as adults to do what they do. But I always uh, took a liking to, you know, one of my older brothers, um, uh, one of his uh, girlfriends, fiance, and I were very close. Um, and she was from Dubai. Um, we were very close. She was a sister to me, uh, and we did a lot of things together. We had a lot of fun. Um, they ended up breaking up, and we did we didn't remain friends because of my family structure and just how we did things. But the person that he ended up being involved with, he wanted to make sure that they never had that kind of relationship with his family again. And I saw it, and I. Um, I knew that's what it was. That's that's what happened. Anyway, as time went on, I'll never forget one time my daughter was going to go to high school. And um, it was in a different area. And uh, it was the same ch school that her my, my daughter's cousins, her first cousin actually, which was their children, was going to. And when I told her my daughter was going to that school, I couldn't believe what her response was. And to be honest with you, I never cared for her too much after that when she said, and I have to be honest, you know, when she said to me, um, wow, who do you who do you know goes there? Who goes there? Who do you know that goes there? And it shocked me because I'm I said, and I looked at her in her face and I said, her cousins go there. So she kind of solidified it for me. That, that was the first time she said something insulting. She said a couple things insulting to me along the way in this relationship. So I really didn't know how much um, information my brother had um, told her about his family and us. Because, like I said, this is something that, that was never talked about in our family. But because of the dysfunction, you, you see the separatism and, and, and the secrecy. And, and, and all this stuff so like I said it, it was a different relationship with her because he it seems like he didn't want her to get close to us um, on some levels and we didn't it was very superficial 
And so when she really said said that to me, that kind of like sealed it for me that I didn't care for her. And then when I brought it up, of course, um, no, she said that didn't happen. And I think he kind of took her side of it. And so it was things like that that was happening in my relationship that kind of put me further away from my brother. But I always felt that she was behind it. And I really didn't care for her too much. Um, and as me as a black woman, when I see Kim Kardashian and, and those guys, um, you know, it really, it really does something to me because, I, and I don't mean to sound prejudiced or anything. If, if anybody takes offense to it, you know, oh well. That's why it really shocks me. It doesn't shock me. It's, it's like, I, not, it doesn't shock me. It really penetrates home to me how a lot of Armenian women go after black men. And then, but the question becomes to me, how, when they get involved with these black men, how much do these black men respect their family or in, or, or do they change these, these men to the degree where they are not the same people? Um, and that's how I kind of feel of, of, about my brother. Um, I felt that way about him very strong and we are starting to try to repatch our relationship. But it's difficult. And it's extremely difficult when you have a, a mother that triangulates and a father that triangulates because during their um, divorce or during their a p certain period of time, my brother took sides with my father. And of course, you know, I took side with my narcissistic mother. So, like I said, it's not the best relationships, but, but I have a lot of brothers. And this is one particular brother. So, I know that for a long time, we didn't talk. We really didn't talk at all because of this dynamic. And a lot of times when the pain is so great and you guys haven't been taught how to communicate and, um, you know, be honest with each other, you know, it just puts a dent in your relationship. And which was really terrible because at one time my brother and I were so close and I loved him so much. You know, I looked up to him. Um, you know, he was a star and um, an athlete in the town that I live in, in Milwaukee. And so, uh, again, um, I just know the dynamics of this type of relationship or with parents that not only triangulate the children, young children. They grew up to be adults. Um, they, they, they don't know how to manage those problems that they have because they, they weren't um, encouraged to work them out by their parents. In fact, their parents encouraged them to not talk to one another and separate themselves from one another, which I think is not healthy. I think it's more healthier to learn how to communicate. And once you have those tools, you can have healthy adult siblings that know how to communicate with one another and don't have to go years and years and years without even speaking to each other. So, with that being said, who's that? You guys, y'all hear this news story. It looks like I know this person. I can't find a remote control. Okay. Well, anyways, not somebody I know. Um, but what I do want to say is that's very true. When you take the chance 
um, and confront your family members, albeit safely, about the behaviors that they have had. Be willing to talk about the behaviors that you may have and have exhibited in the way they experienced you. Because a lot of times we have stuff on our minds like we want to tell people about how they treated us, but we don't want to understand how they experience us. You see what I'm saying? We can tell them how they hurt us, but we can't listen to us to them tell us how we hurt them. And I think that we have to be able to do both in order to have a healthy relationship and a healthy conversation. Like I said, um, there's always going to be struggles, um, especially when you haven't learned these um, techniques as a child. But you can overcome it. And you can work to have a healthy relationship with people that are in your family and in your life it may not be um, as you know as the next person it may be just as healthy as um, uh, um, as you allow it to be because if you completely go no contact which you have a right and a choice to do then it should be really extremely something so egregious um, Otherwise, little by little, you can you should try to um, unleash some of the pain and possibly, if it's all possible, possibly that will help you and the other person get to a better state. Okay. So with that being said, I thought I'd bring that on for story time today and, and, and discuss that because yes, there is a risk. That when you begin to confront people about the things that they've done and things, you know, that, that you've done to them, you know, it can, it can be pretty scary. And you and it can you can feel pretty alone. And it, it is always that that lurks over the situation. But you have to walk in courage. You have to ask God to shine a light and you gotta do it. You gotta do what you feel what you feel and do it anyway. Alright. So I had to get that out this morning and if you like what you hear please like subscribe share and leave your comment below i appreciate it thank you very much and see you in the next video